Welcome to JavaScript tutorial number 11, Cookies and Local Storage. In this video, we'll be learning about how we can store data over multiple sessions using both cookies and local storage. Every video have all slideshows and code available in the description. So what is a cookie? Cookies are the strings that are stored in the browser of a user who is visiting your website. This is commonly used for storing the session ID of a logged in user so that when they return to your website, they are not required to log back in. Each cookie is stored as a key value pair. So here I have a key as name and a value as Draps TV. Why do we use cookies? They hold information across web pages. They are also a relatively simple way to get persistent data between a server and a browser. You may never need to have access to the data on the server if all you do is build browser apps. But there may come a day where you need to use session information on both. In general, remembering a user's preferences or that they are logged in or saved something will greatly improve their user experience with your app. Saving a cookie is relatively straightforward. The special property called cookie on the document object allows us to access the cookie storage. I call it a special property because you can only store one cookie at a time. If you try to save more than one, they get ignored. We use a semicolon to separate cookie information such as expiry or path information. If we don't set an expiry date, then the cookie will be deleted when the browser closes. So you want to set it to sometime in the future. Alternatively, if you want to delete a cookie on purpose. Alternatively, if you want to delete a cookie on purpose, simply set the expiry to a time in the past and poof, it's gone. I should mention that on Chrome, you cannot use cookies in local files. So for the examples in this video, you'll need to use something like Firefox. I'm also fairly certain that expires will be forced to the end of the session while running as a local file. All right, finally, but importantly, how do we load cookies back in? Well, it turns out it's a little more difficult than saving them. When we grab the contents of the cookie property, the browser gives us every key value pair that it has stored for the website. So we need to split it up with the semicolon character and then split it again with the equal sign to get the key and values. So we can grab the values we want out of it. Hopefully in the example, the code I use to retrieve cookies will be as simple to understand and reuse as possible. Okay, let's jump into it with some hands-on experience. There's plenty of opportunity for cookies to go wrong as we're dealing with strings and pulling data from them. Let's just make a test harness for saving two values as cookies with expiries and then retrieve them back. Let's call it cookieapp.html. All right, so I'm going to grab, I'll say my, which one I'll grab the add one. I'm going to use this as a template. So I will save that as cookieapp. All right, so now that we've got our file, what I'm going to do is I'll just uh, remove everything from inside the script section and I'm going to surround the script in the head tags because I want to make sure it's part of the head this time. Um, I'll move my body down. Alright, so now that we're in the head, I'm going to create our fields that we want to store stuff in. So I'm going to have an input field for, I don't know, say the user, so the uh, user, and the ID can be user. And then I'll copy this. We're going to have another field. We'll do uh, the age. And we'll call this, um, just call this age. It's easy enough. And then we have a button to, we're going to have two buttons actually. We're going to have one to save and we're going to have one to load. So we'll have two buttons. We'll have one as save cookies. And we'll have one as uh, load cookies. Uh, it might even be better to say save to cookies and load from cookies because we're actually setting fields as well. All right. And I can remove the heading there and I'll leave the uh, output I might just reduce the tag to out all right so we've got our harness here our template uh, we're ready to start writing our cookie code 
So what I like to do is to make it work like an associative array for each of my cookies. So var my cookies. And this is going to be an associative array that I just store my cookies in. All right. So now that we've got uh, this global array uh, that I can use to save my cookies, I'm going to create a function to save cookies and a function to load cookies. So function, I call it uh, save cookies. And this is what our save to cookies button is going to call. And the first thing I want to do is say my cookies, uh, open brackets, and I'll do an underscore user. So this is going to be the key that I use to save my username. And that's going to equal uh, document dot get element by ID. And we want to grab the user element. And we want to grab the value out of it. All right, and I'm going to copy that line. I'm going to also grab out my age, and I might call it uh, you age, so my user age, and we're going to grab that out of the age field or the age ID. All right, so we've grabbed our two things and put them into the associative array, associative array, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, sort of start this uh, section of reusable code. All right, so inside this sort of section here, what I'm going to do is set the document uh, dot cookie. So whatever's already inside the cookie, I'm just going to get rid of. Uh, at least the cookie string. And what I'm going to do is set up my expiry. So var expire uh, called expires date. Oh, I might call it attrib. So it's my expires attribute, and that's going to equal a new date. And we're going to use the date of now plus uh, 60 times 1000. So we're going to save it for 60 seconds on top of now dot uh, to string. All right, so now that we've got that all set up, we've got our expires. Now we're going to set up our cookie string. So this is going to be what we're going to use to store each cookie. So we'll call it cookie string equals an empty string. And now I'm going to write a for loop. So for, and I'm going to loop over var key in my cookies. So this way, it doesn't matter what how many things I've got inside my cookies, I'm going to store all of them. And inside of that for loop, scroll down a bit, I'm going to set my cookie string to equal key plus, open quotes, equals, so the equal sign, plus my cookies, open brackets, the key to pass in. So it's going to grab the value out of my um, associative array and store it with the key and then I'm going to add on to the end open quotes semicolon close quotes plus the expires attribute plus and I'll add a semicolon on there but it shouldn't matter whether it's there or not all right so we've got our cookie string now we need to save it to our cookies so document dot cookie equals our cookie string and that'll save that cookie and that'll loop over each one of our values inside my cookies and save it out and then we'll slash slash and that's the end of the reusable code so. all right so now what we're going to do is i'm just going to set our document dot get element by id and our out to it's in a HTML and it's going to be equal to uh, document dot cookie so we can see that it's working all right so that's our save cookies function done let's write our load cookies so now we're going to write another function that's going to be our load cookies 
and inside here we're going to do a similar thing except we're going to be pulling it out so we're doing a start reusable code and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the my cookies associative array or empty it if there's something already in there and then I'm going to set uh, var kv for key value so this is going to be our key value pairs it's going to equal document dot cookie so I'm going to get the cookie string and then I'm going to split it so split function on the string and I split it by the semicolon all right, so now that we've got our key value pairs, that'll be our, say, our underscore user equals whatever our username was that was inputted or our user. What we're going to do is we're going to iterate through each of those. So for var in, uh, var ID, sorry. So the ID is just going to be our key in, our uh, KV, so in our, inside of our key value pairs. What we're going to do is we're going to set var uh, cookie equals the key value pair open and the ID. And then we're going to split that with the uh, equal sign. All right. So that'll split it out. So now we've got a cookie which has uh, a zero element which is the key and the one element which is the uh, actual value so now what we're going to do is we want to set my cookies so our associative array we're going to pass in the cookie with zero so that's our key dot trim because we want to trim off any white space that might be in there because we can't have that in our in our key otherwise it will just won't won't work how we expect it to and then we're going to make that value, uh, make that key equal uh, our cookie uh, one. So the sec second half on the right hand side of our equal sign. So we're going to pull that out and then we're going to set it back inside of our my cookies associative array. All right, so now we can end our reusable section of code there. So what we're doing is we're pretty much rebuilding all of our cookies in our associative array. So now what we can do is our document, um, what we can do is just come up here and grab our, our values. And instead of making our cookies equal to it, what we're going to do is do it in the reverse order. So our user value equals the my cookies user. And our document value of age equals my cookies you age. All right, so we're just reloading everything back in. All right, so that's it. Let's save that and let's give it a shot and see if it works and see if we hit any errors, which it's, it's quite likely. So cookie app, let's drag it into our browser. We've got our user and our age. So I'll type in uh, drafts and I don't know, how old am I? I guess 25. Saved cookies. Oh, looks like we may have an error because it's meant to print out what our cookie string is. So if we right click, inspect element, have a look at our console. What have we got? Ah, uh, we haven't set up our functions. So we click come back. Here we go. So save to cookies. We want to run our save to cookies function. And for our load cookies, we want to load cookies. All right. So let's save that and let's come back and refresh. All right, so if we save to cookies, we get our cookies that are saved. So user equals drafts and our U age is 25. Now we reload the page and everything disappears and we clear out the values the browser has just kept there. If we load from cookies, we get our values back. So if we keep refreshing, we remove our values and we refresh, load from cookies, it's still there. Awesome. So we managed to get a working cookie example uh, without uh, too many errors. Awesome. All right, now what is local storage? Local storage was introduced in HTML5 as the replacement for cookies for client-side applications. It works just like a JavaScript object or associative array. However, it persists over multiple sessions. The downside is that servers have no access to them, meaning we can't use them to remember users who are logged in. 
An important feature to remember is that local storage lasts forever, unless the user manually removes them or the browser is uninstalled. So how we use local storage is as simple as a JavaScript object. The local storage object is a persistent object and is always available. Some older browsers won't support it, though that shouldn't bother us. There are three functions that we can interact with, set item, get item, and remove item. Though it's usually easier to access the properties directly. If you want to remove everything you have stored, you can either iterate over each key and remove it, or you can use the associative array function dot clear. Okay, let's give it a go. This time, we're going to modify our original cookie code to use local storage instead. Let's call it localapp.html. All right, so what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to come back to our cookie app and I'm going to save it as, and I'm going to call it our local app. All right, so I've got a new copy of it called local app. Now what we're going to do is we're going to re redo our script section, but this time using local storage. So I'll remove the my cookies associated array. We don't need that anymore. And I'll rename our save function to save values. All right, so instead of uh, grabbing out, um, putting it into our associative array, what we're going to do is put it straight into our local storage. So local storage, so local storage with a capital S dot, and I'll save it as underscore uh, user. That's going to grab our user value, and I'll do a local storage dot underscore u age save our user age All right, and then we don't need any of our uh, our cookie code we just need our local storage so it's just we've cut that down to two lines there and I'm going to remove all of our cookie code from load cookies and have it as load values instead and instead of grabbing it out of an associative array we're just going to grab it straight out so what we can do is just copy and paste this line and grab it out just like a JavaScript object. We can save that. And I'm just going to rename our functions down here. Make sure that it calls them correctly. And we're going to save to local storage and load from local storage. Save that. All right. So that's already cut our, our whole page down a whole bunch. So we'll save it, come over and we'll drag our local app inside of our web browser. It looks very similar. And if we type in our local storage, some traps, age, I'll say I'm 22 this time. We'll save to local storage. And we can clear it out and load from local storage and we grab our values back out. Refresh the page. River values, refresh the page, load from storage, and we get our values back. Awesome. Super simple. Session storage is almost identical to local storage. However, it only lasts until the tab or browser is closed. This can be useful if you're storing large amounts of data that you only need to cache while the app is in use. This concludes our look at cookies and local storage in JavaScript. Next, we'll be looking at creating and using anonymous functions and callbacks. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.